Business is about time and money, and your gear cutting tool or hob has a lot to do with both. For roughing, going fast makes money and making more parts per shift. For finishing, going the right speed and feed for the final pass usually equates to surface finish that's in tolerance and happy repeat customers, which is more money. A major factor in machining at higher speeds is the metallurgy of the hob. Please watch all the way through and give us your feedback, please. The beginning of the story starts with the Egyptians in about 3000 BC. Drawings from their pyramids depict the use of metal objects. And in 38 BC, the scriptures tell us the first forging of iron was done by Tubalcane. The history is long and many have made significant contributions. Today, the origin of those metals and the ones we use today are from mines like this one in Sweden. There, the correct geological conditions existed to create the ores needed to make tool steels. The scale of operations we do not normally see are vast. It's no surprise that one of the largest suppliers of cutting tools is Sandvik of Sweden. As we will see later, the very small microscopic scale of material science makes a huge advance for tool steels. The principal metals processed from mined ores are tungsten, molybdenum, cobalt, closely followed by chrome, vanadium, carbon, sulfur, and iron. More correctly, these are elemental metals, most of them are, found on the periodic table. Note that carbide is not on the list because it is not an element, but rather an alloy or combination of two elements, tungsten and carbon. Most of the tool steels are comprised of elements from the transitions metal group. This is a neat little site uh, I want to share with you that shows the detailed zoomed in vision of the electron clouds for each element where some of the mystery lies. Let's scroll through the cloud models of the tool steel elements. By the way, iron is the backbone of the alloy mix, usually making up more than 60% of the alloy. It's not talked about, but it's the major component. Carbides aside. Not only do these enhance our cutting tools, but they are great alloying agents for structural steels used so heavily to build our modern societies. Let's go back to about uh, 1910 and see where we started. Heat treatment was tested at elevated temperatures well beyond the accepted norm of 875 degrees C and beginning at around 950 C made increasingly hard steels. Harder is faster and this had more to do with heat meat treatment processes than the alloying agents. In 1910, looking into grain structures and detailed metallurgy was very difficult, but the concepts were starting to crystallize. Alloys bring different properties and in co correct proportions make a great hard alloy. Heat treatment is important and grain size of the resulting alloy is important. The progress is rapid and families of alloys begin to emerge, especially the tungsten and moly families. By about 1920, powder metallurgy emerges into the industrial world. The method uses the alloys in powder form, the PM process, allowed another series of breakthroughs in performance and adjustments to formulations of alloys. PM is traditionally just appended to the name so you know it's powder. We assume you already know about hobs and how to specify them in terms of pitch, module, pressure angle, topping or non-topping, finishing, right and left hands, and their size and dimension and bore. The alloy of the hob is what we're highlighting with these blue boxes and you can see the Different styles of hobs and typically where these occur are on the edge of the hob itself and they're, they're almost always etched in the side with all the other key dimensions for uh, hob properties. Another element to naming that confuses things which is meant to standardize them is that there are multiple standards organizations for metal alloys. There's ISO which is ISO which is International Standards. There's Germany, which has the DIN. And then here in the States, there's SAE slash AISI. So the takeaways are, find out what kind of composition your hob has. If you characterize these elements here, you'll know what type of high-speed steel alloy you are working with, and you'll know what family it's in by what the composition is. 
Next, if you look at the metallurgy and hardness and the properties, other properties it's given, that'll give you a great idea of what it's capable of doing. And then whether it, it might be a carbide hob, which is uh, a different makeup of tungsten and carbon, also sometimes with trace elements. So those items right there will, in the dimension of the hob, will give you your performance envelope you really need to look at. And uh, also the hob is usually marked with it. And you can typically look for some of these trade organizations and decode what that uh what that those elements are and figure out where they fit in their trade group so those are the elements to look through and looking for a hob to match with your project they're very very beginning generalized points i skipped over tons of information all these topics are super deep just wanted to touch on the materials used for hobs hope you enjoyed this uh, it was fun to do this research and bring it to you these are items of uh importance to doing mass manufacturing. We want to give this information back to you. Thanks again. Please subscribe.